In this video, I'm talking about the different aspects of abstract thinking skills. I give examples and then you can understand what is abstract thinking and how you can develop this. So, abstract thinking skills, everybody has it. We cannot exist without this. But the question is, what is your level in abstract thinking, low or higher? And it's domain specific. Of course, there are some generalities, but it's usually domain specific. So you can be very good at mathematics. Mathematics is an abstract thinking. But maybe you are not good at art, because art also needs abstract thinking. So let's look at some examples. That, for example, you want to create a painting. And if you don't have a good abstract thinking skill in art, then probably you will draw something first. And then you will think what is the next step, and then you draw something. Like you draw a tree, and okay, what shall I do? Okay, I put a dog here. Okay, I put the sun there. So you have no abstract thinking, you cannot visualize. So it's come to visualization that you create in your mind a full picture. So great artists, they spend months or even years to create a full image in their mind. They visualize it and then they draw it. The same is making movies. You create a story in your head. You visualize this, you, you, put, you create the characters, you, you create everything. And the same with storytelling, that you create a story in your mind first. And it comes to the next, it's about metaphors and analogies. Because storytelling, metaphors and analogies, they use abstract thinking. So you use these three, to explain something to people. You want to teach them something. So for example, a, a story for a child, you want them to be honest and brave and fight for the poor people and the fight for justice. So you tell a story, the child will abstract the message and ignore the details and then learn something from this. So we learn naturally by abstraction. And metaphor and analogy also requires abstract thinking because they are tools to explain something that people don't understand using, with using something that they understand. So I want to recharge my batteries. This is a metaphor. And the meaning is that I'm tired, I want to have a rest. And the parallel, the common in both of them is that energy, low level, do something, get high level, and then you can do something very well. So the mobile phone doesn't operate well, no enough energy. Literally, you recharge it and it has high energy. And you need an abstract thinking to create this metaphor and to understand this metaphor. Jokes. Humor is another way when you can use abstract thinking to understand the joke because you have to connect things that is not in the joke or maybe uh, you have to have other knowledge about, let's say, a politician or a stereotype of cultural knowledge and you have to be able to connect things. So understanding jokes and telling jokes and creating humor needs abstract thinking because you need connection between things. And this leads to creativity, because creativity is seeing connection between two or more things and combining them together in a new way. And this also leads to innovation, because you innovate, it means that you understand the present situation. Let's say innovate a product or innovate a system, let's say education system. So you understand the present situation, you, you abstract this, that what is the essence that is important for you? And then you create a model for the new solution, and then you create, in, in, create a complex mental model to, to make it work in your mind, and then you create in the real life. So you create, you use abstraction. But the abstraction is arbitrary, because let's say that you want to uh, innovate the education system if you abstract that the purpose of the education system is to make people pass exams, prepare them for exams, then 
if this is your abstraction, you ignore all the app, the uh, context, what that the teachers and schools and uh, syllabus and education department and parents and children. If, you, if this is this one, then you will create a new system that based on uh, having high mark on exam and then you create whatever solution works. But if your F section is about preparing people for for the job and in this case you will abstract in a different way you will different you will create a different complex model and you create a different education system and this new ex education system if it works will prepare people for for the job so your abstraction determines what is the new technology the new uh, institution and the same with business you can create a business model maybe based on some other businesses your own business and you create a better solution because you understand what is the main point and you abstract what is missing and then you can create a new business model in your head and then you implement and you have a business so this is about sometimes abstraction means that you have one thing and you just abstract so you can understand the essence, the, the main core. Or sometimes you abstract different things and see the commonalities. What is the common? Or pattern recognition. Or it's about trend. Let's say fashion designers. They understand the past trend and they can abstract in their mind and project what can be the new trend. How people think. Or in communication, when you want to understand other people, you abstract their thinking you observe their behavior you observe uh, you test them how they think and then for example you can motivate them if you understand that this person is more motivated by uh, rewards positive motivation or maybe you realize that this, this person is not motivated by giving them something but motivated by threat and taking away and punishing maybe that if you understand this or if you understand that uh, this person is more motivated by connection, emotion, love, affiliation, belonging to a group, or maybe they are, this person is more about power and control, or maybe it's about achievement. So when you can abstract this person, look at from one perspective, and then you understand you have theories. Okay, so theories and frameworks and mental models, they are also abstraction. Then. You can understand people. You can understand, for example, uh, you abstract this whole person. Just look at this. Is this person, what is the locus of control? Is internal mainly or external outside? If you understand this, if you abstract this person and look at from this theory, this perspective, then you can uh, really motivate this person and talk to this language. That use different theories to create a profile of this person and then it, the profile creation is abstraction from different perspective. So first you abstract that, for example, locus of control inside or outside. Or what is the motivation? Or this person is more about abstract thinker or always in the, in the physical world. So there are many personal tests are abstraction. They use abstract skills to understand people by ignoring all the other factors and focusing on just one, two, or the, for example, the Meyer Briggs model, they use four dimensions, two pairs, and they created uh, 16 personality types. This is an abstraction because everybody is different, but you want to abstract. And this brings us to the next one, categorization. This is also an abstract thinking. To, like uh, when we are very young, we just see, uh, tangible real life things like dogs cats specific and when we have more and more examples then we start to categorize them and of course we get help from the parents that this is a dog this is a cat this is a crocodile and then you use categories you understand this abstract thinking that what's the difference between a dog and a cat they have four legs they have fur so what was the difference you need abstraction skills to create categories and the thinking categories and it's 
that all of this and all science is also abstraction. Scientific approach means that you ignore all the other factors and you just focus on this one. If I increase this one, let's say, uh, if I increase the, the elevation of the uh, boiling temperature of the water, how does the elevation, uh, sea level, or one kilometer high, two kilometer high, I want to study what is the connection. Like air pressure, how air pressure influences the boiling temperature, you abstract this. You need an abstract thinking to ignore all of the things and focus on this one. But it also needs an abstract thinking skills to be able to find what to abstract. Because maybe you never thought about that the elevation is, is, is about. So science also uses statistics is about abstraction. Okay, what about? Look at men and women and look at what is the salary difference. So how the gender contribute to your salary or education level. This is also abstraction. And abstract thinking is also good for uh, transferring knowledge from one domain to another one. So if you know how to learn uh, to play the piano, then you learn a lot of things about learning. So learn to learn and then you can learn tennis much faster because you know how to learn how to control yourself, how to go through the boring parts, how to practice, how to control your mind, how to get help from other people. So you learn something, you you learn something and you're abstract. So understand this is their skills. We humans naturally develop abstract thinking skills. Everybody has this, but if you never thought about this topic, if you don't learn about this, then you naturally develop abstract thinking but you can do something to improve your abstract thinking skill and it's usually what you can do is spend more time in a domain and be aware of your thinking yeah yes self-consciousness uh, emotion control control my own emotion and understanding other people's emotion this is also abstraction understanding other people's thinking when you model other people and uh, how they feel put yourself into other people's is also an abstract skin, skills. So learn something deep and you need to go higher and higher abstraction skills. So that's why you can be a genius in mathematics and you have all the abstraction skills and you master because mathematics is simple. Okay, so uh, create using symbols understanding symbols, mastering symbols, like language, or mathematics, they have a lot of symbols, or music. It's an abstraction skill to, to associate uh, music, sounds, with visual symbols, or the English, the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, associating with sounds. So you need to uh, abstract skills to be able to master symbols because communication between people language is a set of symbols how to use abstract rules to create specific correct sentences in any language it's abstract thinking skills you use abstract grammar rules and you create specific sentences in that language it's symbol mastering and all science uses symbols chemistry just look at the chemical symbols physics mathematics uh, the law needs abstraction because how to use they usually use specific uh, cases and then there are a lot of rules that you can apply this one so how to abstract if i abstract this one then i use this specific law but if I use a different abstraction, I will find another law. That's why the law and lawyer is being very specific, but also being able to understand the complexity of law, which is super abstract, and then you have to apply. So detective and inductive thinking comes to abstraction because you have to move between the specific and the very general abstract thinking. So again, improve your abstract thinking skills it is a skill it is a not talent it's, it's you spend more time 
and learn about what is abstract thinking, then you will be better and better. Let me illustrate abstract thinking with this IQ test. But actually it's not an IQ test, but I use this. So one, four, seven, these are the first three elements of a set of four elements that are related somehow. So use abstract thinking to determine which of the following four possible answers can be the fourth elements. Find the logic by which your selected answer fits in according to your logic, while the other three answers don't fit in by that logic. So the four possible answers 9, 10, 12, 14. So you can pause the video and spend some time to think. So let's see the answers. If you choose 10, that is the most common answer. And the abstract thinking part is that you realize that from the first number to the second number, you increase by 3. And from the second to the third one, you also increase by 3. So if you always increase by 3, then the 10, 10 is a correct answer. So abstract thinking in this case, you see a pattern. Okay. If you, your answer is 10, that is the low level basic abstract thinking skill. This is what most people can do. And usually they give up. So they find an answer very quickly and they give up. And that is their abstract thinking. But if you look at all the other answers are correct. 9 is correct because it is the only one digit number. So if you spend more time to think about this and see how can you abstract. So this is a different abstraction. It's not about some mathematical operation, but it is about uh, looking maybe visually and looking at the number of digits. 12 is also a correct answer if you abstract differently. So it's a little bit more complex. The number of letters when you write down the words in English. So one has three letters, four has four letters, seven has five letters. So the logic, the abstract thinking that the next word should be included six letters. So 12 fits to this one, but the other three answers 9, 10, and 14 don't fit this one. So this is also a correct answer. And another abstraction that is also gives us a correct answer is 14. Because if you look at visually, it's a visual abstraction. 1, 4, and 7 has straight lines only. And 14 also has only straight lines. And the other three numbers 9, 10, 12 has some curves. So if you see that what abstraction is, that you choose a perspective, you choose something that you are focusing on. So it's a focusing tool and you eliminate all the other information and then you focus on this one and this can be used to recognize patterns. And those people who think that only 10 is the correct answer. They don't see that there are many different abstraction, infinite different ways to abstract something. And they believe that they know the correct answer.